fun cake that I wanted to fit in a film review. You're with Julian on the brown note and a review of the film Mandy, which came out a little while ago. A Greek Canadian film director called Panos Cosmatos, cool name. Born in Rome in Italy, um, but now a, a Greek Canadian for some reason. He may be on the Black Rainbow about 2010, which I never saw, but I did feature the soundtrack album from on this show. Uh, he came back in 2018 with a film called Mandy, and I've been talking about the age of Cage, the rebirth of Nicolas Cage. I think a national treasure, well, an international treasure, the 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 Omega to Keanu Reeves Alpha, perhaps. Um, even his bad films, some of them have been truly magnificent, like The Wicker Man. And when he came out with The Colour Out of Space earlier this year, a really good film, but not quite great, but still really good and one of the year's most interesting horror sci-fi films. I noticed that he's been cropping up every now and again in really interesting films. Joe was one of my films of the decade, as this would have been had I seen it before the end of the year. Um, and that was, he's so good in that film, a masterpiece, and you should definitely watch it. Um, but in between, in 2018, he starred in the film Mandy. Um, now, this is a very simple setup. Uh, Nicolas Cage is a guy working out in the forests. They're always working in these forests, cutting down trees. He did similar in Joe, he was killing trees in that film as well. And they're in a remote location, and it's intimated that he is someone that's had a very dodgy past, uh, and he is um, somebody that I think was an alcoholic because he refuses a beer pointedly when he's being ferried back. And he lives near a lake or in some um, beautiful place in the woods with his girlfriend, played by Andrea Riseborough, who is unrecognisable in this film. She's an English actress, and if you remember the film Oblivion, Another really interesting, if very flawed film. She was Tom Cruise's de facto wife when they lived in that thing in the clouds. And she was very well-spoken, pretty upright person. She's completely different here. She seems to be someone that's come from probably a very abusive, maybe drug-soaked past. She seems to have a big scar on her face, probably the result of domestic violence or something. I'm just thinking maybe they're intimating his stopping drinking with the fact that that came from him. I don't really know. They have a very love, lovey-dovey paradigm where they don't know anyone else on earth. And she works in this very small local town. Along the way, uh, I think it's Linus Roach. Yeah, as Jeremiah Sand. He runs a, a religious cult. And it's a horrible religious cult of the worst kind. This is set sort of in 1973, I think, uh, by some of the musical choices. Um, and they, he basically is one of these cult leaders that um, he thinks he, he's, he's Manson-esque. He thinks that he's recorded a music album. He thinks that he's God's gift to music. Um, they seem to prey on young girls and obviously kidnap them because one of the young girls seems to be there and they're all whacked out of their heads on LSD all of the time, and they actually make it, and um, they're all they're involved in the process of making it and sell it to people like Hell's Angels. Um, they drive past in their goon bus, their Scooby-Doo bus one day, and see the Andrea Riseborough character walking along the street, and he falls in love with her. So they perform a home invasion on Nicolas Cage and her um, using these three Hells Angels. Now, these three Hells Angels appear as um, the angels of death, not as human beings at all. In a highly bizarre moment, they appear out, as seemingly out of the gates of hell. And it's um, explained at another point in the film that uh, they were awful people given uh, lethal doses of LSD, which sent them inc insane. And they've never come back from this. And now they basically work as killers for hire and have this horrible house where they've kidnapped people and murdered them in. They come, uh, steal the girl, tie Nicolas Cage up in the garden, and basically they she ends up dying after mocking Jeremiah. Um, she ends up being murdered brutally. And the rest of the film is a revenge fantasy where Nick Cave, Cage goes after this guy and his um, first of all he tracks down the hell's angels and then he goes after the religious cult 
Um, and that's a fairly straightforward Death Wish style trope. Nothing else about this film is straightforward. It's one of the most heavily stylized films I've ever seen. Virtually no scene in it is filmed naturalistically or cinema verite. It's often loaded with um, color filters and like you're on an LSD trip, it's so trippy to watch. The cinematography by Benjamin Loeb is absolutely incredible. Uh, it's one of the most visually arresting films I think I've seen. It's stunning to look at all of the time. Everything happens in this off-kilter dream state. The music is incredible by Johan Johansson, the, the Icelandic composer who died a year. I think this was his last or second to last film score. I played the Sicario score last week on this show uh, before he died from a drug overdose. Um, a frequent collaborator with Denis Villeneuve. Um, he makes an amazing soundtrack here. Uh, so visually and sonically, this film is incredible. Uh, Nicolas Cage in the central role is magnificent, as this is a gonzo film. Uh, the Colour Out of Space dipped its toe in gonzo and got to gonzo at the end. This is gonzo all the way through. It's absolute insanity from start to finish. It's a breathtaking film, uh, and it's best to be watched as a visual experience because it washes over you sonically and visually like nothing else. Um, last decade was arguably a high point for artistic and challenging sci-fi and, and horror movies, particularly through people like A24, um, where lots of very highbrow and artistic and challenging and visually stimulating horror and sci-fi films were made. And this would be at the absolute top of the pile. Um, it's a very challenging film in the sense that... Um, it doesn't offer doesn't offer sort of conversational tone in it. Everything is heightened. Um, everything is bizarre. It has unforgettable imagery everywhere. The Hell's Angels, the three Hell's Angels, are truly terrifying. A lot of it's very unpleasant. A lot of it is um, like a fever dream. That's very you know, it's a nightmare film. Um, but I found it so alluring to be part of this world. Um, I think that the director has done an amazing job. Panos Kosmatos has done an incredible job with this film. And Nicolas Cage is absolutely fantastic in the main character because he commits to the gonzo elements of the film completely. It's not like just being crazy like in The Wicker Man. He really goes hell for leather and invests himself in this character who has a rebirth after his um, sedate sort of version of a nuclear family. He explodes into rage, but he never loses his sympathy. And there are many scenes in this, such as the one with the chainsaw. <laughs> Do you think that whole knife-spoon thing, the, the knifey scene in uh, Crocodile Dundee, they have a similar one with the chainsaw here, which is, again, lots of it is hilariously funny. Uh, this is not a film for everyone. It's very challenging. It's art house. It's very graphically violent. It shows some very unpleasant sides to humanity and inhumanity. It's extremely weird, but I think this is an absolute masterpiece. I'm sad I'm running out of time to talk about it, but Mandy would have been one of my films of the decade, uh, and I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Well done to Nick Cage, well done to the cinematographer, Johan Johansson on music, and Panos Kosmatos for one of the most unforgettable experiences of cinema I've seen in recent years. For Mandy from 2018, a 9 out of 10 from Bill Callahan.